Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for your giving tonight. What a blessing. Y'all love the Lord tonight. Amen. When we do this here is we love the Lord, when we lift our hands and thank him. Not because I tell you to, but I'm saying let's do it together. Well, that's like me telling you anyways, but let's do it from our heart. <laughs> While she's going to give us one more song, well, let's connect with the Lord and, and join her in singing. I don't know what she's going to sing, but let's enjoy the worship of the Lord. Amen. Whatever you want, you sing, you're the boss. Father, thank you, Lord God, for this time to be in your presence, Lord God. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you so much for all that you have done for us, God. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord, and we're so thankful for this time to be in your presence. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for all that you will do. Bless and accomplish your will tonight in the house of the Lord. As we continue to worship you, we just want to thank you so much. Thank you, Lord, for loving us so much. Thank you for your amazing grace. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for restoration. Thank you for everything that you've done for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, let's join her in singing tonight. God can do it. So what are you preaching about tonight? God can do it. <laughs> I can't
came home from work and asked her, says, is this a chorus or is this a song? <laughs> As a choir song. I was like, well, well can you do it tonight? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. I know my God can do it. I know my God can do it. I want to read to you tonight from the book of Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. We'll read verse 11 through 18. Hebrews 10, 11 through 18. It said, And every high priest standeth daily, ministering and offering, oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one, sac one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down on the right hand of God. From henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he had perfected forever them that are sanctified, whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their heart, and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. I want to use this passage, and we'll use verse 16 as our text. Or something that we can use as a text. He said there, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. And with the help of the Lord tonight, I want to use this thing, and I want to preach, with a, preach on a message entitled, God Can Do It. God Can Do It. Why? Because she just told us, I know my God can do it. There ain't nothing to it, right? God can do it. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful and thankful for this time to come to your house and the worship and your presence and everything, Lord, we are grateful for it. And tonight, Lord God, we thank you for the reading of your word and for the preaching, the message. We ask, O oh Lord God, tonight that you will grant by your mercy and grace a fresh unction from above and the anointing of the Spirit of God, Lord, because we know your word is alive and it can speak. And tonight, Lord God, let the Word of God have free course. Open our understanding, open our eyes, our spiritual eyes to see and our ears to hear, and let the Word of God sink down into our heart, that it may accomplish its purpose. Bless now, we pray, and we ask all these things tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to preach about God can do it. God can do it. He said... In our text there, I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. And this passage of Scripture, especially the whole book of Hebrews, just the very name tells us who it was written to. It was written to the Jewish people. Hebrews are precisely, it was written to believers that were, that were Jewish, and they, they accept Christ as their Lord and Savior. And the, the, the writer, which we believe is Paul, the apostle, he wrote this book to encourage them in so many ways that they really don't need to go back to the Old Testament ritualistic things. Of course, the Old Testament is divided into different sections. We have prophets and prophecy. We have uh, the poetic aspect of it, like the Psalms and, uh, um, and the book of Job. And then we have historical things. So he's not saying everything about the Old Testament is done away with. But when he speaks of the law, he's talking about the Levitical laws, the things that were given by Moses for the people of Israel. And under that law, the, the only way of obtaining any kind of remission of sins or any kind of, of forgiveness, if you will, which weren't really true forgiveness, was they had to offer animal sacrifice time and time again. And this was something they had done for over a thousand years. Over a thousand years they've been doing this thing. They grew up with it. Their whole, their, all their ancestors all the way back to the time of Aaron and Moses. That's what they did. They offer animal sacrifice. They went to the temple day after day, as he said there in verse 11. 
He's in, in chapter 10, verse 11. He said, And every high priest standeth daily, ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sin. And so this was all they know. Go to the temple when you sin, bring an animal, go through all the ritualistic things and all the ceremonial things, and then let the priest kill the sacrifice, take the blood, you know, pour it around the altar, and then make an atonement for your sin. That's all they knew. They never understood what, was, what, was, what it was like to have freedom on the inside. They never understood what, was, what it was like to have their sins completely forgiven. They never understood what it was like to have this God that is so great and mighty put something in their heart that can transform them forever. They never understood that. And so Paul began to write to them and he said, there's a day coming when he said, I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. Something that may seem impossible to them. How is this possible? How is this possible? It haven't happened to us in thousands of years or a couple thousands of years. Never happened. But I'm here to tell you, God can do it. Yeah. Amen. God can do it. He can do the impossible because he went on there and he shows us in verse 12. He said there, but this man, speaking about Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down on the right hand of God. <laughs> God can do it with one sacrifice, with one sacrifice on the cross. The altar of, uh, for our salvation was the cross. With one sacrifice, Jesus given his life on the cross. One sacrifice, he can forgive us completely of all sins. We don't have to go back to the temple over and over and over again to offer the same sacrifice which could never take away sins. Jesus did it once and for all and he did it completely. A complete work, amen? Thank God, my God can do it. And so this is the message he was trying to convey to these Jewish believers. Hey, God can do it. God can do it. Yes, I know what you were accustomed to. I know what you grew up with. But Jesus can really change you for the better. Jesus can change you forever. And so in, 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 in this verse 12, he gave us the real deal, if you will, the real solution to the problem. The blood, of, the blood that Jesus shed on the cross for you and for me is so powerful that once it is applied to our soul, it can cleanse it completely from all past sins and transgression. The blood of Christ is able to cancel all our old record of sin. Can I get an Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank God that God, I don't have a record of sin any longer. That old account was large. It was growing every day. But God took it away. Amen. God destroyed that mountain of sin that each and every one of us had from our youth all the way to the time that we came to Jesus. God can do it. God can do it. He can make us brand new. He can forgive us. We don't need to every day repent for the same old sin. One time repentance, one true genuine repentance or genuine repentance can completely change us forever. Thank God for the power of Jesus. It cancels the old record of sin. It clears our conscience and brings us into a right relationship with God. Yes, my God can do it. My God can do it. He can give us a right standing in God. My God can help me to live holy. My God can help me to live righteous. My God can help me to live a morally pure and upstanding Christian life. I don't need any excuse. If I sin, it's because I want to. If I fail, it's because of my own doing. Because God doesn't fail. And God, if I allow God to be God in my life, then I don't have to fail either. My God can keep me from falling. My God God can keep me from, from going back. As you said, we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we need that pause, right? Us preachers, we get so wind up and we just keep going, going, going and become like the refrigerator. <laughs> going, going, going. Sometimes we need that pause to let things settle in. He said, we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. Perdition means destruction. He said, but we are of them who believe to the saving of the soul. Believe to the saving of the soul. In other words, we believe so much that we're willing to do whatever it takes to keep going forward. We're willing to do whatever it takes to keep on the right path. 
We, we, we believe so much in the saving of the soul that even when we are wrong, we will humble ourselves and say, God, I messed up. I messed up and I want to make it right. Even if we have wandered off the beaten path in the straight and narrow way and we see ourselves uh, somehow, God revealed to us the knowledge, hey, look, uh, you have uh, when you, you, you've completely drifted off the right way. And we see ourselves in the sight of God and we say, oh, Lord God, I am so far gone from the truth. Uh, and we humble ourselves and we come back. Uh, we believe God will accept us and God will forgive us and he will renew us and he will bring us right back. You know why? Because he can do that. He can do it. He can restore fallen people. He can restore those who have gone out of the way. He can bring them back into the fold. He said he will leave the 90 and 9 and he will go after the one. That's how much he cares. And he can do that tonight. He is the good shepherd. He can follow them down and say, son, how long will you keep going in the wrong direction? How long would you keep going in your own way? Why don't you come back to me come back to the right way God is able to do it again he's able to do it again he's able to appease one sacrifice from Jesus was able to appease the wrath of God and to bring peace to our soul something we couldn't do for ourselves but God could God could it gives us a new beginning we don't have to repeat the process every year when we get saved we are saved we just have to maintain that salvation. We don't have to get saved every service. Now, we live in sin. We need to repent and get it right. But Jesus is able to save us completely from sin. He's able to do a complete work in our life. And so that's what he's telling these uh, disciples here. He said, look, you had a high priest under the Old Testament. Every single day, these priests had to offer sacrifice after sacrifice after sacrifice. And the thing about it is, all it did was just uh, fulfill the law. It didn't really make them clean. It didn't make them pure. They were still guilt. They still had the guilt uh, you know, of, of all the things that had done. It didn't do anything for them, really. It just covered their transgression. But he said, now Jesus, when he offered his sacrifice, it didn't just cover our transgression. It removed it. It removed it. It took it out of the way. As far as the east is from the west, the Lord removed our sins. And so he's telling these disciples here, God can do that. God can do that. Not only that, he's telling there in our text, as I read to you, he said, I will put my laws into their heart and I will write it into their mind. And so what can God do? What is the message tonight, preacher? What, what are you trying to get to? The message is this. God can put something in our life that will change us forever. Amen. That's the message tonight. God can put something in our heart that can transform the way we think, that can transform the way we live, that can transform the way that we conduct ourselves, that can transform us completely. And so tonight's message is, let God put something in you that can change you forever. As he told these disciples there, he said, I will put my laws into your heart. You know, we need the law of God in our heart because that's the thing that will keep us from sinning against the Lord. Lord, as David so rightly put it, he said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. I'm so thankful tonight. You see, when you commit the word of God into your heart and you meditate on the word of God, it will keep thee. It will keep thee in the way that I'll go. When you go to the right or to the left, you will hear that still vo small voice speaking to you and said, Come back to the beaten path. Come back to the old way. Come back to that right way. And the word of God will speak to you. Wherever you are, the word of God will speak to you and bring you back in the right way. Amen? Amen. It will bring you back in the right way because God put it in our heart. He told him there, he said, I will put my laws into thine heart. Tonight, let God do put something in your heart that will help you. Maybe you need some confidence in God. I'm preaching, but God can do it. God can do it. Maybe you need some confidence to really, really trust God. Let God do it for you tonight. Maybe you need your faith to increase and to grow to where you can really stand on the promises of God. God can do it. Let God put it in your heart because if it's in your heart, it will control everything you do. If it's in your heart, it will control everything you do because the heart controls everything we do, right? The heart controls everything we do. So when we fill our heart with the things of God, then that will be the driving force of our life. And so tonight, let God put something in your heart. See, for us to stay pure and clean, we have to let God put something in our life. We have to let God put his laws in our heart as he told them there. 
As he told them in, in, in the scripture, he said, he said, I will put my laws into thy heart. I was thinking about that scripture when Jesus was teaching the disciples. And he said, when the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he said, an unclean spirit go out and begin to walk to and fro, looking, seeking to find a vessel to occupy it or to live in, to, to, to possess. And so he was teaching the, the, the disciples that, that when God comes in and God clean you up, it's like he casting out all those unclean things and he make you clean and now you're pure. But he said, you can't just stay empty, clean and empty. You can't just stay clean and empty. He said, because that spirit went out and that spirit is looking for someone or someone else to possess or someone else to, to, to fill. And if he said, if he doesn't find one, he's going to come right back to you. He's going to come right back to you. And if he find your house swept and garnished and nothing in there, he's going to move right back in. <laughs> right? He's going to move right back in. So the message is, let God put something in there. That will keep the devil out. Let God put something in there that will keep Satan out. And so whatever thing that God delivered you from, whatever you pray, maybe you, you already got saved, but there's still some things in your life, and you came to God and you pray and said, God, I want you to take this out of my life, and God took it out. Don't leave that part of your life empty. Fill it with the Word of God. Fill it with the laws of God. Put something in there to occupy that spot so that if the enemy should come again and look, when he look in there, like a sheer Sunday night it's occupied there's no room see all these things come right back together there's no room right it's occupied he can't get back in because it's already filled up and so that's what Paul was telling him he said I will put my laws into your heart and I will write them in your mind oh Jesus tonight write your laws in our heart write it on on the tables of our heart and in our mind so that it can be fresh in our heart so when the enemy comes and he try to put up all these temptations or all these things the word Word of God will be there to remind us that those things are not right in the sight of God and it will keep it out it will keep it out we need the laws of God in our heart amen, amen. he said I will put my laws into their hearts and write it in their mind you see the laws of God are his commandments and his word and the way you let God put it into your heart is by reading it by hearing it and by meditating on it. There's three different ways we can fill our heart with the Word of God. Feeding on the Word of God. Set aside quality time for the Word of the Lord. Read it, as the song said, and let it bless your soul. If more people read the Bible, really read it. Not just to fulfill righteousness, but spend some time and read it. I don't know how many times I've read this Bible over and over through back and forth and every time I read it, it's like something fresh learn something new find something new here then I listen to somebody preach it and I, some some something new come out of it I mean, and that's what Jesus said he said he said a preacher is like a householder he said a preacher or a minister is like a house householder or someone who's in charge of the house he said he bring forth things new and old Things new and old. And so when, when the preacher gets up there, he may be reading this old Bible to you. And all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost gives him something new from it. Right? He brings forth things both old and new. And that's the way it works. Because the Word of God is alive. And God said He will write this Word in our heart he will write it in our heart and as you read and you allow as you read it and you meditate upon it oh how wonderful it is as you're sitting there sometimes you're just thinking about the word of God and you meditate on the word of God it's in your heart you're filled with it and you're thinking about it or meditating about it and then all of a sudden God just brings something to light something come on and you're like whoa thank you Jesus I never thought about it that way before and all of a sudden the Holy Ghost began to enlighten you about something that can really change your life forever. Amen. Amen. That's the way God works. <laughs> Got baptized <laughs> in the name of Jesus. <laughs> it's on this side of the camera. Nobody can see that. But Job said, I have esteemed the word of his mouth more than my necessary food. Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. I'm talking about let God put something in you. God can do it. Let God put something in you tonight that can help you in your Christianity. Let God put something in your heart. These disciples needed the law of God. And Paul said, 
God was going to write it. He said, I'll put my laws in their heart, and in their mind will I write them. That's what they needed. At that time in their Christianity, they needed the word of God because they were brought up under the Old Testament ways that God had done away with. And so they needed some. This, that's what they needed to help them. But the question tonight is, what do we need as an individual? Each and every one of us may need different things tonight. The message is, let God put it in you. Because he can. Right? God can do it. God can do it. Don't tie the hand of God. Whatever you need, call upon the Lord tonight. God can do it. These disciples need the law of God, but what do you need tonight? What do you need for God to put in you that will solidify your faith in him? That will give you the ability to grow a little stronger in your Christianity. To climb a little higher in your walk, in, in your walk with God. To become a better Christian, a more faithful, devout person that loved the Lord. Every one of us are called to grow on a daily basis. What do you need? God can do it. He can put it in your heart tonight if you will call upon the Lord. He told us in, in the book of, uh, of Joshua 1, 8, he said, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success tonight let the word of God whatever it is I'm preaching about the word of God because that's what the text deals with he said I will write my laws in their heart and in their mind will I I will put my laws in their heart and in their mind will I write it that's what they needed they needed the word of God listen to it read it meditate he said how shall they hear without a preacher and then he went on and tell us in the book of Romans he says so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing what by the word of God by the word of God so what do you need tonight? You need faith? You need the word of God. You need the word of God. You need encouragement? You need the word of God. You need love? You need the word of God. Whatever it is, God can. The message is God can do it. God can do it. God can do it. Uh, preacher, I need a miracle. God can do it. Uh, preacher, I need a touch in my body. God can do it. Uh, preacher, I need a good night's sleep. God can do it. How many times I pray, God, I just need some rest. Uh, boom, I'm gone. I get down here to pray and Hallelujah. I'm asleep already. I get a good night rest. I believe God. I believe God can do it. Great or small. I don't, I'm not afraid to ask whatever it is. It may seem stupid to someone else, but if I need it, I need it. And I'm not afraid to say, God, bless me. I'm not afraid to say, God, help me. I'm not afraid to say, God, give me wisdom throughout the day, praying throughout the day. God, just help me. I, I don't know if I've sinned or not. God, forgive me. Cleanse me. Whatever it is. I'm walking through the warehouse, just talking to God, praying, spending spending time with God, calling upon the Lord, reading the Bible, asking God, create in me a clean heart, oh God. Renew a right spirit within me. Put something in me, God, that can help me. Help me to be encouraged in the faith. Help me to rise above the challenges. Don't let me, be, don't let me become weak and fall to all the attacks of the enemy. When the enemy comes in like a flood against me, put something in me, Jesus, that I can stand up and rebuke him in your name and that I will put him on the run instead of him destroying me or causing me to become discouraged. Help me to discourage him. Amen. God can do that tonight. I believe him. I believe the Lord can do it. God can do it. Let God put something in you tonight that will make you a threat to the enemy. Let God put something in you tonight that will cause a devil to be afraid to come around you. Let God put something in you tonight that will cause you to be a better Christian, that will cause you to be a better person, a better father, a better mother, a better brother or sister, a better husband or wife, a better child. I pray, I pray all that today at work. I'm just preaching it now. I already prayed it for myself. God, help me to be a better husband. Help me to be a better father. Help me to be a better a preacher. Help me to be a better soul winner. Help me to be a better Christian altogether. Help me to be better in my life. Let God put something in you tonight that can help you to be better. And to be the Christian that God wants you to be. And so these disciples here in the book of Hebrews, they needed the word. And God said, I will do it for you. He said, I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. That's what they needed. What do you need tonight? What do you need tonight? God can do it. Paul was telling these disciples, don't think it's impossible for God to write his laws in your heart. He can do it. 
He can do it. And so tonight, don't think it's impossible for God to put something in your life that can transform you. It can happen tonight. It can happen tonight as you open up your heart to God. God can do it for you. Let God put something in your life. Let God put something in your life that can help you. Some salvation in your soul. And that word salvation, it's not always talking about getting saved. Salvation means deliverance. Deliverance. We'll say it over and over. It means deliverance. Right? Salvation means deliverance. And so sometimes we just need to be delivered. It may be something, it may, it may be something small, but God can still help us. He can still help us. Let God put some faith in your heart. Let God put some joy and happiness in your life, in your spirit. You don't need to be discouraged. You don't need to be dis- depressed. God can help you. The message is God can. God can. He can do it. He can do it tonight. Let God put some joy in your soul and some happiness in your spirit. Let God put some peace in your mind. Let God put some hope in your heart. Whatever you need, let God put it in your soul tonight because he can. Don't hold back. And don't hesitate. If you need something from God, just open up your heart to the Lord and let God put it in tonight. This is your night to receive something from the Lord. As Paul was writing, like I said, to these disciples, encouraging them, he said, look, you don't need to go back to the old way. That way didn't work. Jesus already created a new way for us. He already created a way where you can be saved completely from sins and don't need to go offer an animal sacrifice every time. He said, and the way what you need is you need God to write his law in your heart. And when you read the law of God's heart, you will read that uh, you are forgiven. You will read that you are cleansed. You will read that you are a new creature in Christ. You will read that you can do all things through him. You will read in the scripture that his laws will be in your heart to remind you that all these things are done by the power and the grace of God. And so he was encouraging them that God can do it. He will do it for you. And so tonight the message is, God can do it for us also. He can do it for us when you come to your instrument. Let him put his Holy Spirit in you. Maybe tonight you feel a little bit weak. Let God put some strength in you. Maybe you feel a little bit timid. Ooh, I didn't mean to do it that way. <laughs> Maybe you feel a bit timid tonight. Let God put courage in your heart. Maybe you have to make a, a, an important decision. And you're afraid of the outcome of it. But you know it needs to be done. You know it needs to happen. Come before the Lord and say, God, give me the courage. Give me the courage, Jesus, to make this decision. Give me the courage of God to go forth and go forward with this thing. Maybe let God put a desire for you for more of him, a dedication, a devotion. Whatever it is tonight, I'm just sharing things here. Let God put the Holy Ghost power in your life so you can overcome those little things that trip you up every time. Let God put a genuine love in your heart for God because he can. God can do it. Let God fill up your life until there is an overflowing of things. You have come tonight to the house of the Lord. And I'm hearing the message that God placed upon my heart. The message is God can do it. God can do it. Amen. For us here tonight, for you that are worshiping with us online, the message is very simple. God can do it do it. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Jesus told him this in the book of Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come in unto him and will sup with him and he with me. I'm here to tell you tonight, God can do that. God can come into your life. And God can give you what you need. He can give you forgiveness. He can give you restoration. He can give you joy, peace. He can give you happiness. He can give you power. God can do it. God can do it. God can do it. Amen? We just have to open up our heart. He said, I'm standing at the door and I'm knocking. If you, op- if you hear his voice and you open the door, Jesus said, I will come in. Invite Jesus in tonight. I'm not necessarily talking, if you need to get saved, of course, that's a must. You need to be saved. Jesus died for your sins and rose again from the dead. And if you believe in him and confess your sins, he will forgive you. And you invite him into your heart, he will come in and become your personal Lord and Savior. That's a must. You must be born again. But I'm talking about in general. He said, if you hear his voice and he's knocking at your heart, 
Just open and say, Lord, Lord God, you know what I need. You know what I need tonight, Lord Jesus. Nobody else knows about it, but you know what I need. The message is God can help you. As you bow your heads and close your eyes in reverence to the Lord, those of you worshiping with us online tonight, God knows your heart. God knows what you have need of tonight. If you open up your heart to the Lord, God can come in and help you. He said he's standing at the door and knock. Let him in. Unlock the door. Slide that bolt and say, Jesus, come on in. Come on in, Lord, and help me. And God will help you. She will play and sing tonight. Let's, find some, let's spend some time in prayer. Lord Jesus, tonight, show us your mercy and your goodness, oh Lord. Come in. Our hearts are open to you. Come in and help us, oh God, because we know you can do it. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' name we ask all these things. Amen. Let's take that with you for the remaining this week. Remember, whenever God can do it, say it in your mind. God can do it. He can help me. Whatever it is, God can do it. He can do it for me. Amen? He loves you, and you're just as important as the next person to him. So he can do it. Tonight, uh, I pray that God will bless and help us all. And for you to join us online, remember, we'll be here again on Sunday morning at 930, and we encourage you to to um, tune in and let's worship God together. Let's grow together in the Lord.
God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of the week. And pray for us. We'll pray for you. And let's, let's do this together. Father, thank you for your love and your mercy for the service tonight. We know, God, that you are well able to do it. You can do it for us. Whatever it is that we have need us, we know that. And tonight, Lord, I pray that all that will believe, all that will call upon your name, all that will ask of you and bring their petition to you, Lord God, I pray that you will hear and answer and that you will bless and accomplish your will in our life. We love you and thank you so much. In Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen.